Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. Last time we shaped the puzzle pieces using curves, but now pressing on a piece still uses the rectangle shapes defined earlier. Today we'll fix this by using pixel-perfect collision detection on the pieces. Let's begin. Today we wrap up this project. You can see Mr. Chibisan is already eagerly waiting us here. Only thing remaining is to handle when user clicks inside the tabs. The outer tabs are not clickable, and the inner tabs select the piece even when it shouldn't. You would think that it's not a big issue, but if pieces overlap like this, you won't get the piece below it, and it's very annoying. You don't want to annoy your players now, do you? To fix this, we will re-implement the way we select the pieces. I will use a different strategy for this. Bear with me for a while as I implement some things that may seem unrelated. First, let's make a function to generate a random color. It will first generate a random red component between 0 and 255, and we make it into an integer using floor. We do the same for the green and blue values, and return it as a string using the RGB syntax like this. Now we'll generate a random color for each piece. We really want the colors to be unique, and it's very unlikely for duplicates to happen, especially when the game has only a few pieces, but on insane mode... I don't know. Better safe than sorry, and check if a color was used before and regenerate it in that case. We'll pass this color to each piece, and now, in the piece class, we store it as an attribute. Then, in the draw method, we'll specify a second argument that tells whether to use the camera or not. Default set to true. If true, the code here stays the same, but if not, it will draw the pieces using their color instead, like this. I use the fillRect method here and add a padding of tab height so that the outer tabs are colored as well. Now let's test by setting useCam to false. Everything still works, but now the pieces are more colorful and the camera input is not used anymore. You can actually play the game like this, based on the shape alone. It's quite easy on easy mode at least. Now, we did this change because I want to use the clicked color to detect if I'm clicking on a piece or not. Like, here it should not detect a click, because there's nothing there. And here it should activate, because I'm pressing on a pink color. The piece with the color I'm clicking on should start dragging. We implement this by going to the unmouse down callback function, and getting the color information from where we clicked on the canvas. We get the image data at event.x and event.y as an array with four elements. First is for red, second is for green, third is blue, and fourth is the transparency. I check if the fourth element is zero, so transparent, and return in this case. We're not clicking on anything then. This is not white actually, it's transparent black. But if we pass this part, we format the color in the RGB string format, and check to see where it belongs inside the piece. We need to implement a new function for that, but it's really easy. I'll use this other function as a reference, and pass the color here as a second argument. Now we loop through these pieces as before, and if the color matches, we return that piece. Simple as that. Now, if you want to make the code more efficient, you could store the pieces in a dictionary with keys equal to the color values, and then do this lookup in constant time instead of linear. But this method here works just fine. 
We don't have that many pieces, even on insane mode. Okay, let's refresh and test. It works, but now you're gonna say, but Radu, so what if it works? We want to see the webcam image here, not some random colors. And to that I say, multiple canvases. Have you ever used multiple canvases in your projects? I think it's a really clever technique, but not very used for some reason. And I'm not sure why, because memory is not an issue nowadays. Maybe you can think of a reason and let me know in the comments. We'll add another canvas here. I'll call it helper canvas. And now in JavaScript, I'll refer to it as well in the same way we did for the other one. We then set its width and height to be the same as well. Now, in update game, I'll also clear the helper canvas like this, and then draw the pieces normally with camera data on the main canvas, but using the colors on the helper canvas. And the trick is that now on mouse down, we don't take the color data from the main canvas, we take it from the helper canvas instead. Let me just refresh and you'll get it in a sec. Or a couple of seconds. It doesn't work. I forgot to change the ID here to helper canvas. Okay, now my elements show the helper canvas somewhere here below. Let me just move it into screen like this. I'll make it smaller so it doesn't overlap as much and I'll put it in the corner here. Now, when I click somewhere on the main canvas, the corresponding color value comes from this helper canvas, so selecting the piece now works as expected. And both canvases update at the same time, making the helper canvas a reliable hit detector for our pieces. This helper canvas doesn't need to be visible. Actually, it doesn't even need to be added to the DOM, but it can be there as well. It's useful for debugging, I think. I'll just set the display here in line to none, and that's it. Let's test one final time. That's it for today and for this project. You can download the source code from my website. It's split into parts, so you can follow along the tutorial if wanted. Hope you found this fun and interesting, and that you learned something from it. And if you did, please like and share this video with anyone you think is interested. Also, let me know if you find a better strategy to play the game. It took me one and a half hours to solve the insane mode with 1000 pieces. There must be a smarter way of doing this. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you guys.